so so shall we shall we calculate uh, the yield to call or yield to maturity so in this case if it's callable so just assume the bond will be called so we should calculate the yield to call yield to call yeah <coughs> when when interest rate you see the bond is offering 6.35 percent of coupon rate so when interest rate is lower than this it's possible for, for, for the company to call back the bond and reissue at a low interest rate. So this interest rate is very high. And so when interest rate drops, so the company will call back and reissue. Let's say when they issue the bond um, before the financial crisis when interest rate is high, it's a good time for them. Like financial um, crisis happens, interest rate drops too close to zero. So it's very possible. It's 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 very likely for them to reissue at close to zero interest rate and 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 retire those high coupon bond. So, so, so you should for the yield, <coughs> huh? for the yield? yield, but but you should use the you should calculate yield to call instead. Okay, so our period. So Sam, did you get four point two percent? I did for the yield to call. I'm yeah. a little confused. <coughs> so. Based on the question, it seems yeah. like these conditions yeah. make it seem like the coupon rate is going to fall. Coupon rate is never, f never no, change. Sorry, no, I'm the, the interest rates in the market. Well, <coughs> they, it happens only when interest rate drops. Right. And then, and where, then, where so. The question doesn't say. So you see, that interest rates are expected to fall. Well, you see the coupon is high, so so you just assume. Well, ju just assume. Is, uh, is that a high coupon rate? Well, 6.35%. Just assume this one is uh, this one is high. Because when you calculate the yield to call here, 4.2%. So, so if the yield to call <coughs> is less than the yield to maturity or the less than the coupon rate yeah. and assume that they're going to call it because it's a high interest rate? It's high interest rate, yeah. Well, I don't know how to tell. I don't know how to tell. Like, Because uh, when yield to maturity and we know like uh, how much, what kind of cash flows you're getting, but for yield to, to call, it's uh, n not like so for sure because the bond could be called and probably will not be called. So it's very hard to say. Let's just assume it's called by the end of year five. So if that happens, what kind of returns investors are getting? So if it's not called, and then, so you might expect this bond to go to like maturity. So to answer, the, to answer this question, would you just choose whichever of those two, the yield to maturity and the yield to Well, because it's callable. And since it's callable and you know the price you're getting, so you can figure out how much is yield to call. Right. You can also figure out how much is yield to maturity. Right. Yeah, but you don't know. You don't know, like, they will call the bond or not. Right. Yeah, but you can calculate both rate. And so would you just answer <coughs> whichever of those two is lower so that your investors don't? Yeah. I'm just I'm just confused why yeah, so we're supposed to do the four point two percent rather than the Have you calculated the YTM? Yes. Yeah. How much? It's uh well I did calculate it earlier and then I deleted it when I, I got, got it five thirteen. Right. Five thirteen. It was higher, yeah. Um sorry, for number five, I'm sorry. What 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 <laughs> I'm just you well, were, were you been, are you no, you're good. well, I guess if you increase. I'm on Excel. I'm doing it. I'm trying to like do yeah. it on both the bond calculator and Excel. He said something about on Excel you have to divide 8.4 by 2. Is that true? Yes. yes. Okay. And then also for number five, we're not using rate, right? We're using another function. Number you're five. Using the present value because oh, you're trying okay, to find the price. Thank you. Okay, well. All of the Excel <laughs> functions. She gives the calculations on her website on the right side if you scroll up. Okay, cool. Thank you. And it tells you where to plug in things and all that. 
But you can also try the math equation. I encourage you guys to do that. <laughs> It just, it just. Okay. Right. So I'm just, I'm just thinking why we use 4.2%. Well, you know, if you if you put this uh, not one, but if you put this number higher, uh -huh. and then you get YTC might be higher than YTM. It's depending on how much uh, this one was set. So. So would you choose the lower of the two? That's my question. Well, see, the the bond price was uh, was usually when the bond was so f first sold in the market is selling for a thousand dollars. So in it will go up and down depending on the market condition. So you see, the price has gone up more than a thousand dollars now. So and that means the market interest rate have been falling. Okay. So so it's really hard to say. Okay. So so when it's first issued, it should be selling for a thousand dollar, and then so the YTC is the one number. And then YTM is another number, but but market is changing, so it's you can you can say what's what's going to happen in the market. So you should just do the <coughs> yield to call because that's a more consistent number. Well, yield to call because it's happening um, more quickly. So and if the company called, this is the return you're getting. Yeah. So so it's very likely since the market interest rate has been falling, so it's likely the company will call the bond back. So. So it should be 4.2%, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Let me use a uh, quickly. It's annual um, 20. 5.31, it's wrong, right? 4.2. Because you did 20 instead. Oh, yeah, 5. Yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah, 4.2. <coughs> okay. So for 9, we're looking for it. For, you're, uh, now you're ahead of us. Uh, yeah, for nine, for nine. So we're almost done with the homework. So for nine, got it? <coughs> 930. You might want to open two calculators for this one. Um, so Sam, did you get 930? Yes. Let's see. Uh, let's open two calculator. Thousand. <coughs> now, how much? This is my setting for the second part, right? And uh, the first part is to get 9.28% is the yield, right? Right. 9.28% and for the second part, it's 25 years. 20 years, 20 years. <coughs> Sorry, can you back to the other one? The other one? Yeah. But you should use Excel to do that, but I'll just visualize this for you. Yeah, and the second one, um, price 930.2, 930.2, okay.
right? Yes. 930.2. So. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's so. No, no. No? No, because it's not 20, it's 19. Oh, it's 19? Yeah. Because it, it says that. 931. Oh, nine is. Uh, five years. Five years. Uh, five years from now. Or five years. I don't know what it's called. Five years or. Um, so it's 25 years. Uh, five years from now. So it's 19 or 20? 20? No, it's 20. Right? 20, yeah. So it should be 20. So 930. So. All right. All right. So. Um, so see, we are familiar with the bond, so I just want to provide more information for you. So you see, and this is, this is a Walmart bond. Um, so you guys know where to find the bond information, right? Bond price where? Brittany? You huh? You can go anywhere. I normally go to Yahoo Finance. Bond? You can find it. Oh, bond. I bond. Stock. No, not stock. Bond. You can find um, on Yahoo okay. Finance, yeah. No, for bond. Kelly, where do you go to find the bond information? Here, <laughs> here, here, here. Click on this link, the FINRA bond market information, or you can go to uh, yield curve or bond yield curve information, bondonline.com. Let's see. Oh. No, they don't have the bond. Okay, the stock. stock, yeah, it's only stock, yeah. <laughs> For a bond online, uh, I guess they no. they went bankrupt. I would go to Google.com and I would search one. Um, no, go to fira.org. And okay, this is so easier. So fira.org. It's a Morningstar company. FINRA.org, Financial Industry Regulatory Authority. Go to this one. And uh, go to for investors, right? And then go to, um, go to uh, for investors. Okay, go to market data center. And then where, to, where shall I go? Bonds. Bonds, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then where shall I go? Where shall I go? I want to look for Walmart bond. So this is a yield, yeah, see this is a yield curve. <laughs> we did it last time, this is, a, this is a yield curve. We did it last time, yeah, go search. And what to do? Walmart. Walmart, yeah. <laughs> Walmart, and then what to do? And what to do? Show results. <laughs> now I have to agree. <laughs> now this is a bond information for all bonds is still outstanding. So, yeah, so you find the price. This is the price. This is the yield. Of course, you have to add percentage. Here, here, uh, it was considering the power value is a hundred, not a thousand. Since it's a, a thousand, you have you have to multiply by ten, because this is considered a hundred dollars as power value. Now, if it's a thousand dollar power value, you multiply by ten. So this bond is how much? One three nine five point eight six. This is the current market price. The price is changing daily depending demand and supply. So the yield is your yield to maturity. You buy this bond, hold it till this date, 2030, February 15th, and you get 3.211% of return. Your cash flow is 75 and 50. Do you want us to use those current prices when we're talking about? The current prices, yes. Can you, I see those. The 2024 bond and the 2044 bond. Those yeah, yeah. Do you mind scrolling down so I can see what those current prices are? 2024, 20, 20, right? This one? Yeah. Yeah, this one is in the, the last what in the last question. This is a this is a symbol or the name no, for this bond. The, I can't see the, the oh. price. The current there price is well three point one thousand thirty dollars and fifty three cents. Two point six two one is your uh, yield and you can find out more information for example for example uh, who's the underwriter and uh, uh, who's the underwriter the total underwriters. huh there's a lot of underwriters yeah uh, oh. lots of underwriters it's in that it's in that thing that you yeah but see you can click on it you see so this is the price it's 3.3 percent of the coupon rate due in 2024 so you click on it 
and this is the bond detail. So, yeah, I, so you click on this process back test. Oh, sorry. You click. This is the contract. This is a contract. So this is where I got this. Uh, and you click on it, so this is where I got the information. <coughs> so, so, so the attachment, is the underwriters are in the attachment? Yeah, I see. We can we can find that, and you see, this is the, this is how much um, million, this is billion, two point four billion dollars. In this this time, uh, Walmart issued two point four billion dollars. Why? This is happens. This was happened in which year? 2010. So 2.4, 2.5 billion dollar raised by Walmart in year 2010. Because of what? Because why they do that in 2010? Because interest rate are low. Interest rate are low. <coughs> so yeah. Makes sense, right? Interest rates are low, so they issued um, due in 2017 for only 1% of coupon, 1% of interest they paid. Uh, in 2024, 3.3. 2044, they only pay 4.3%. This is their borrowing cost. So this, is, this happens in 2011, so market interest rate is low. So companies are trying to increase and the, the debt, increase the debt by issuing lots of, lots of bond because interest rates are low. Yeah, and see, you can find out more details. Uh, underwriters are, who are the underwriters? Here, these are underwriters. The underwriters, <coughs> why, why, why they need uh, the underwriters? Why, what? why they want, why they want underwriters to do this for, to raise bond? Do they, don't they just like essentially back that the loan is legitimate, that like the bond is legitimate? Like they make sure that everything is done correctly? Correctly and legal, because it's, and yeah, and also because it's regulated by SEC. Right. So they have to satisfy, like we used to have a professor, his name is Van uh, Seaton, you guys know him? He used to, he used, he's, he, he used to work in Wall Street for all his life and then he retired and to start teaching at GU at the, old, at the really old, old age, but he passed away. He used to be the underwriter for JEA bond. In his office, uh, like I've seen, like he has certificate. He has this kind of, uh, what is it? Uh, he has, he, he, he has, he's helping JEA to raise bond. Yeah. So, because they need, they need, uh, they also need the market. These underwriters will help, help the company to find the potential buyers, the big buyers. Uh, yeah, and also legal, legal for legal reasons. It's 2.5 billion dollars, so it's really not a small amount. 2.5. Okay, so any companies like you're not, um, you like we know, uh, we're familiar with, right? Or any companies like we don't, we're not so. Mizuho Security sounds like a Japanese company, right? It's probably they're trying just to market um, this in the Japan's market in Japan. What's in RBS? Japan. RBS is a uh, RBS is investment bank. Uh, Royal is that Canada? Royal British or maybe UK? RBS is a, one of the big big one. S uh, Credit Suisse, right? I mean, this is a German. Um, Sweden or Swiss investment bank, this one. RBS is probably Scotland. <coughs> so they're all big investment banks. Okay, so a lot of the underwriters for, for this. But there's the big ones, I guess those one was the big, um, big ones, those are listed on the top are the major underwriters. And uh, and they have some um, book running managers. I don't know the detail, but these are the information. What does what's what's the purpose of this uh, issuing borrowing so much? Two point five billion dollars. Did you find it somewhere? Uh -huh. uh, it just says use of proceeds. It's a little bit high. It's higher. Here. Oh yeah, here. <coughs> Here, so what's for? 2.5, they have to pay a fee. So even though they 
they have to pay a fee after after they pay the fee this is a net proceeding proceeds from the sales of the notes okay so what's for did that make any sense so it says what are the general purpose general corporate purposes are what among other uses Well, restructure it. It could be like they call back the high coupon bond, they reissue the new, and also they buy back their stocks. They issue the bond, and so they can repurchase of their stock prices. So, uh, so that that way, by doing so, their stock prices will go up, and also build the confidence for investors, and also make the and the management team look good. Refinancing of mature, maturing debt and addition to working capital, future acquisition and other type capital <coughs> expenditures. So, so makes sense, right? <coughs> okay, anything else that you caught your attention? So it has 52 page, 65 pages long. Anyhow, so you can find more details. For example, uh, one bond is, no, none of the bonds are callable, right? And did you find the detail if, this is just a contract when they sell the bond, because since bond is just a contract of borrowing by the companies, so this is their contract. All right, so <coughs> so this is this is one. So you can find uh, like this this bond. This is a different bond, mature um, mature at this state. And you click on this one, you can find uh, informations for that one. So uh, you can also find the trade history. Like for example, this one mature at twenty forty three. You can click on it, uh, so you see the trade history, like stock, uh, millions of shares will be, for Walmart, will be traded um, every day, but for bond, uh, 26. Okay, so um, this bond for this bond, uh, what is the trading history for this bond? Uh, so we have only two, one, two, two transactions. Um, I'm not so sure here. I guess this is the amount, quantity. Uh, so it has 250 bond contract has been um, has been has been um, bought and sold for for this. So you see, it's not as active as um, as stocks. So for Walmart, for this bond, we have only two transactions. It's only we only see uh, two transactions for this bond. So it's not as active as uh, stock, right? So you can find the trading history. You can even find who are the Oh no, you cannot find uh, who are the traders for this. Anyhow, <coughs> so this is this one. Uh, do you have any questions? So we've done the homework. Yeah, uh, this is this is some some bond information. It could be called bond could be called. You could also convert it to stock. Um, it could also be defined in the contract. You can convert it to the stock. It could also has a put provisions for this. Okay, <coughs> now uh, you can find the equations. Okay, now uh, 
let's watch uh, the videos to relax a little bit and then let's start working on this uh, case study and then this is also part of the assignment so it probably will take us like one hour to finish it so um, let's just watch a short video to relax a little bit Ryan huh you did that case study in class no that's another chapter this is a new chapter so we have a case study for each chapter Ryan can you turn off the light thank you uh, just relax a little bit Investing can sometimes seem like a gamble. Maybe this is just too fundamental. Let's see this one. Let's watch a uh, bound risk one. This one is funny. Uh, yeah, here. So we have three videos risk of bound. Bound is relatively safe, but it's not like risk free. So why it's not risk free? Because a company like Walmart could default and also interest rate might fall. As bondholders, when interest rate um, falls, when interest rate goes up, when interest rate falls, and it's good news to bondholders because your bond portfolio value will go up. It move opposite direction, but there's a risk when interest rate goes up and you're still holding the low interest coupon bond. So that's a risk. Uh, also, like uh, when your bond is matured, you have to reinvest it. So that's another risk, reinvestment risk. Hey, still looking to get your first deal done? Or have it been a while since you closed your last one? Well, you can skip this ad in just a couple seconds. Hi, I'm Rick Edelman, ranked the number one independent financial advisor in the nation by Barron's. In this video series, we're taking a close look at investing in bonds. When people get scared by the stock market, many of them sell their risky stocks and they load up on bonds instead. After all, it could be safer or a quieter place to ride out investment turmoil. But it turns out that bonds aren't as safe as you think they are. Sure, they seem safer than stocks, but there's a lot that you need to know. The truth is that bonds face two big risks that can cause you to lose substantial losses. Now, if you think that owning bonds or if you think about buying bonds, well, you need to be aware of these two risks. The first is interest rate risk. We'll begin by talking about what happens when interest rates begin to rise, and then we're going to take a look at credit risk. That's the danger you face when your bonds are downgraded. And then in my final video, I'll show you a smart way to own bonds that can help you limit your exposure to risks and fees. There's no substitute for consulting with a knowledgeable professional. Carefully your next implications before investing. All right. Um, second one, credit risk. This is the first one. Hi, I'm Rick Elman, ranked the number one independent financial advisor in the nation by Barron's. Today we're talking about risks that can affect your bonds. Today's topic, credit risk. Almost all bonds have a credit rating. This rating estimates the safety of the bonds. Will you get the interest you promise? Will you get your money back at maturity? The credit rating helps you know how safe your bond is. Naturally, investors are willing to pay more for bonds with high ratings and less for bonds with low ratings. But bond ratings can change. Say, if a company or state government gets into financial trouble, if that happens, the bonds they've already issued, the bonds you've already bought, could get downgraded. And if they get downgraded, you could lose 10, 20, even 30% or more from your bond's value. And if interest rates rise 3% on a seven-year duration bond while this is happening, your total losses could be 30, 40, even 50%. And you bought bonds because you thought they were safe. Well, that's not exactly the safety you were looking for, is it? Stay tuned for my next video where I'll show you how to reduce your exposure. Okay, then interest rate risk. Hi, I'm Rick Elman, ranked the number one independent financial advisor in the nation by Barron's. Today we're talking about bonds and interest rate risk. 
Interest rates and bond prices have an inverse relationship. When one rises, the other falls. Think of a seesaw. One side goes up, the other side goes down. Now, in normal times, investors debate about whether interest rates will rise or fall, but these days, there is no debate because interest rates are near zero. So most people have concluded that rates are destined to eventually go back up. Of course, no one knows when that might happen. It could take months, even years, but eventually, it's reasonable to assume that rates will rise. And when that happens, bond values will fall. Why? Well, you can find the simple law of supply and demand. Say the government issues a 1% bond, and you buy it. Later, say that the government raises rates to 2%, and you decide to sell your bond. Well, would an investor rather buy your bond at 1% or the new one that pays 2%? Clearly, the 2% bond would be the better choice. So in order to find a buyer for your bond, you would have to lower your price. How much lower? Well, it's based on a calculation called duration. And you could lose as much as 7% for every one point increase in interest rates. That's for a bond with a seven year duration. So if interest rates go up 3%, that bond's value could fall by 21%. So you see, bonds aren't quite as safe as you may have thought. In our next video, we're going to take a look All at right. credit. Ryan, can you turn on light? Okay, uh, so there's the, in Excel, the duration mass, mass equation is very complicated, but in Excel, there's a duration uh, function. You go to formula, go to um, financial, what's the equation? Duration. Yeah, duration is a function here. So you also put the settlement date. For example, you use uh, date function, so it should be, uh, uh, okay date function like today, um, 2019, um, March 26. Yeah, <coughs> and then maturity, for example, uh, it's uh, the end of 2030, 2040, let's say 12, 31. Um, coupon, is, it has to be coupon rate, so let's say 5%. Uh, yield has to be uh, yeah has to be yield okay let's just put annual yield let's put eight uh, percent frequency yearly semi coupon annual bond so so see we got um, we got eleven something so using this duration so what this duration means uh, duration means one uh, percent. Increase and uh, in interest rate, bond price drop by how much? Seven, up to seven percent. Drops, drops by no eleven point five nine percent. The duration tells like how sensitive the bond price is to the market interest rate changes. So that's what this duration. You could just lose like that much, close to. 12% year a day because Fed decided to raise interest rate and then your, your bond value will fall. The duration just tells how sensitive it is. Yeah, <coughs> this is duration, it's a math equation. Find duration um, in Excel. Yeah, duration is math equation. You guys are interested to find out? Um, I, I, I don't remember, I just remember